The Dorcas Trek. Oh, you said Dorcas Trek. I did say Dorcas Trek. Orky Dorks. Yeah, they are awesome. I love Orky Dorks. Dorks. Alex thought I should wear a dog. I don't know. You should wear a dog. I'm not wearing it at school. What? Here you go. It's good to see. What's the end here? 1 over X, DX. Very good. The natural log of, we say, the absolute value of x plus c. The reason why we do the absolute value is because you cannot take the natural log of a negative. And the other one I want you to know today is the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. Good. So today we're going to look at antiderivatives that are of exponential and logarithmic form. In letter A, you have the antiderivative e to the 4x. You need to use substitution in this scenario, where you say u is equal to 4x. So therefore, du is 4dx. I don't have a 4dx. I only have a dx. And so I have 1 fourth du is equal to just dx. I make my substitution of 1 fourth integral du. That allows me to cross off the dx. What remains? e to the u. And the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. 1 fourth e to the 4x plus c. So your last kind of content test for this class is going to be uh, stuff like this. Yesterday you learned how to take the derivative of an inverse function, which was uh, 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. You did that thing. Okay, made that little chart. Uh, you also need to know the antiderivatives of e to the x and ones of logarithmic form. Uh, anybody want to guess what uh, u is in this situation? 3x plus 1. So du is 3dx, or 1 third du is equal to dx. Put 1 third integral du, what remains? 1 over u. What is the antiderivative of 1 over u? Natural log of? The absolute value of 3x plus 1, plus a constant. Try letter C on your own. Aaron's not an orchestra. I've got four thirds e to the x cubed plus c. Very good. U is equal to two x minus nine, so du is two dx. I don't have a two dx, so what should I do? Multiply by four, and I've got four du is equal to 8dx. 
So my substitution is 4 integral du. And I've got that 1 over u. So we get 4 over, oh, I'm sorry, 4 natural log of 2x minus 9. This constant. Not too bad, huh? I uh, just want to let you know that if it was written like this, um, if it was integral of 8dx over 2x minus 9, that's the same thing whether you put the dx up on top or on bottom. A lot of times people see this like the integral of dx over x and they'll get really confused. But that's the same thing as just 1 over x dx. So just note that difference. Sometimes they write it like that on the AP exam. What's different about letter E? What's different about letter E? There are bounds. So we'll have to plug in the results. I want to show you how this works. It's a little bit of a change. We'll see if you guys like this or not. Uh, but uh, we are going to start by finding an antiderivative. And the antiderivative of 2 over x minus 3 dx, uh, we're going to say that u is equal to x minus 3. So what's du? Just dx. I have a 2 dx, so I'll multiply by 2. This becomes the 2du integral of 1 over u. And we get 2 times the natural log of what? x minus 3, absolute value. And we are going to plug in 9 and 4. I plug in 9, and I get 2 times the natural log of? 6 minus 2 times the natural log of 1. Do you remember how I can turn subtraction of logarithms into one logarithm? Yeah, I can do 2 times the natural log of 6 divided by 1. Do you remember that? <laughs> the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is the same thing as natural log of A over B. Or the natural log of A plus the natural log of B is the same thing as natural log of A times B. Remember, if you have a 2 out here, you can move the 2 as the exponent there, make it A squared. Okay, So you have the natural, it's 2 times the natural log of 6. If you wanted to, you could put that 2 up top there make it the natural log of 36. Multiple ways of writing that answer. Who knows how they'll express it on the AP exam? How'd you get the 36? So I took the 2 and put it up as the exponent square of the 6. This next one, what do you want u to be in this scenario? E to the x minus 1. Yeah, e to the x minus 1. So we'll go ahead and do that u is equal to e to the x minus 1. So what's du? e to the x dx. Do we have that? Yeah. So we've got the integral of just 1 over u du. And what's the antiderivative? Natural log. Natural log of the absolute value of e to the x minus 1. And we're going to evaluate that at 4 and 2. Let's see how this works out. I plug in 4, and I get the natural log of <clears throat> e to the 4th minus 1 minus natural log of e squared minus 1. Since it's subtraction, I can write it as division. So I have the natural log of e to the 4th minus 1 over e squared minus 1. What can I now do? Factor the top is the difference of squares. So I have the natural log of e squared minus 1 times e squared plus 1 divided by e squared minus 1. Yes? So did you just get rid of the absolute value signs? Yeah. Who knows why I got rid of the absolute values? 
It's greater than one. Because e squared minus one okay. and e fourth minus one are both greater than one. So no worries at that point. Notice in this situation that the e squared minus ones cancel and you get natural log of e squared plus one. That's straight from an AP practice exam. Actually, that's straight from a previous AP exam. Every, every like five, six years, they release the multiple choice questions on, on the exams. And that, that came from one. Good. Flip it over. These look a little bit tougher, don't they? What do you think you should be in this situation? I'm going to rewrite this so that people can hopefully see the issue at hand. But this is 3e to the, what is 1 over x to the fourth? How could x we rewrite that? x to the negative fourth, OK? And if we're dividing by x to the fifth, is it that times x to the negative fifth? Maybe that can help me. So I'm going to write u as x to the negative fourth. If u is x to the negative fourth, what is du? Negative 4x to the negative fifth dx. So good, you can see I came up with that x to the negative fifth. But I've got the negative 4 out front, so what are you going to do? Yeah. So I have 3, I have e, and 1 over x to yeah. the fourth is the same as x to the negative fourth. I get that, but what is the negative? So I'm dividing by x to the fifth. So that's the same thing as times x to the negative fifth. Okay. So there we have it. And now we're going to divide by negative 4 and we're going to multiply by 3. So negative 3 fourths du is equal to 3x to the negative fifth dx. I now have my substitution. Notice I have the 3. I have the x to the negative fifth, or over x to the fifth, and I have my dx. So I simply have negative 3 fourths times the integral of e to the u du. And I get negative 3 fourths e to the what? 1 over x to the fourth, because we will not leave negative exponents in our answer. We know that that is never OK. Let's see. Why don't you try the next one on your own? Try the next one on your own. It's a little bit tricky, but fortunately, you guys are really smart. So you're going to do great. I'm so excited for your senior dinner dance tonight. Really am. No, I'm just <laughs> Wow. Sounds like you don't want me. <laughs> no, I just, you were talking about the chaperone thing, so I got confused. Nope. Actually, my daughter has her first communion tonight, so mm -hmm. I'll go. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, it was supposed to be last year, but we postponed it a year because we had a track meet that night. So. <laughs> <laughs> this time of year is tough. Track just falls on a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you guys right. have a special Yeah, you can come off by the Try that. We're so good. But no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for you guys because I've talked to a number of seniors that are going, and I think it would be an opportunity for you guys to kind of celebrate, you know, some of those pieces in your class, people who want to get together and do stuff. And so I think you should have fun. another minute and we'll go over it together.
30 seconds. How awesome would that be if the dance started and in walk two party crashers? You got Aiden H and Aiden C, and they're dressed like twins. <laughs> okay, they got it. Got a black suit coat, they got sunglasses, hair slicked back. Like, would that not be cool? Would that not be cool? That'd be pretty cool. Be pretty cool. It's yeah, Emma sees it. So I got one fourth integral du, and what I'll put in its place, I get rid of the one over four x dx. What remains? U squared. What's the answer of u squared? Not to u. Antiderivative. Yeah, that's what that symbol means. U to the third over three. So you should have the natural log of x quantity cubed over twelve plus a constant. Wait, why is it Well, it's u to the third over three, and I got to multiply it by one four. Uh oh. Letter I looks super tough. It's super easy. Let's not leave it in that form. Anybody see how I'm going to rewrite this? Yeah, 3x squared over x is 3x. 4x over x is 4. Minus 2 over x. We've seen many times throughout this year that if you have one thing in the denominator, divide it through, write it as a new fraction, and then take the antiderivative. Antiderivative 3x plus 4x minus 2 natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. What are you watching on that Chromebook? Nothing anymore. Just so I know. Like, I, I feel like I'm missing out. This is pictures of Bible. Oh, you're going through the slideshow. I yes. got it. I got it. Me getting trampled and Miss Haney laughing. Tell you what, if we uh, get through uh, letter L here, <laughs> I've got a, a, a video that I'm going to show you that's going to make all of you laugh. You're going to really enjoy it. Okay? Nothing will make me happy until you eat my carrot cake. Or the Girl Scout. Happier than the Girl Scout. <laughs> what? Okay. Yep. Oh, was that all right. Uh, letter J is where I start to lose people. Am I going to lose you here, Taylor? It's possible. Okay, here's where I lose people. I'm going to take the antiderivative of x plus 1 over x minus 1. And right now I don't know how to do this, so I'm going to rewrite it. Notice how I just have one term in the denominator here, but here I have two terms. So let's just go ahead and divide it using law and division. And that way it will be rewritten. As I divide it, I take x minus 1 and I divide that into x plus 1. If you recall that process, we start by asking, what do you multiply x by to get x? 1. So I put 1 there. And I multiply through by 1, and I get x minus 1. I have x minus x goes away. I have 1 minus negative 1 is? Two. So two is the remainder. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So this problem, instead of looking like that, it looks like 1 plus 2 over x minus 1. Remember, we take the remainder and we put it over the divisor. Now I do this antiderivative. This is easy. What's the antiderivative of 1? X. x. The antiderivative of 2 over x minus 1. Anybody want to guess? 2 natural log of x minus 1. Yes, folks, it does turn out that if this piece right here, if the derivative is 1, you could just simply, you know, just put it right in there. You don't have to use substitution, okay? If it was a 2x minus 1, that would be a different deal. But the 1x minus 1 is fine. That's it. That's not bad, right? Let's finish them off. Our last two, and I'll show you a happy video that'll make you laugh. What is u here? 3 plus cosine. What's du? Negative sine. I don't have a negative sign. Negative du is equal to sine 
dx. I place the negative out front. I do the integral, du. That gets rid of sine of x dx. What remains? 1 over u. What's the answer? 1 over u? Natural log of the absolute value of 3 plus cosine of x. Would I need the absolute value on this? No, because 3 plus cosine will always be positive. But it's okay. Yeah. Just want you guys to understand sometimes AP exam will get rid of them. So I don't know why. Try letter L on your own. But they would never have like one width and one without. And you gotta realize that you don't care. If it's not needed, okay. but suppose it was 3 minus the cosine, that would still be positive. Yeah. Suppose it was cosine of x minus 3, then it has to be, at, yeah. Uh, in this situation, u is equal to the root of x minus 2. Right, and that's the question people come to. How do you know that? You know that because the derivative... is 1 over 2 roots of x dx. And so the reason why that's the choice is because I get something that I want to get rid of. Any Collins, would you agree to be my personal assistant? Or did I forget done with this problem? What? Suggesting no question. Yes, or no question. Sure. Thank you. That was a guess. Sounds like he's skeptical of the situation. Yeah. Uh, Aiden, I think you're gonna have a tough workout tonight. But after that, we'd like to take four volts, Hannah as well. Oh, we'd like to take. I'm... Did Coach be talking to you? Nope. Oh, okay. Because we were doing. Okay. okay, that's uh, fine. Are we having practice tomorrow? Uh, no. Optional practice. I'll probably be down here at 10 a.m. Okay. What? I can't open up the. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Hannah. Hannah, can I offer an optional practice where I open up the facility? Would that be okay with you? you yes. It's okay. Optional at 10 a.m.? That'd be okay? Yes, sir. Is it just I'll be here if you guys want to pop in. I'm not scheduling anything. I'll just okay. open up the pits and you guys could come and get a workout if you want. Open up the. If you want to throw, you throw. That means another two. I got one half e to the u du. So the an the answer is one half e to the root of x minus two plus a constant. How do y'all feel about that? All right, give it up for Aiden Collins. He's gonna be our personal assistant. Aiden, you can either uh, give us exact values or you can uh, not give us exact values and you can just make stuff up. You ready? Aiden, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. We are going to do a kind of a what if situation here, okay? Aiden, give me a percent that you achieved in this class first quarter. Like uh, 95. Okay, so we're going to go uh, 95. Give me a, what you achieved second quarter. 91. 91. Give me what you achieved third quarter. 85. 85. We don't know what you're getting fourth quarter because that's right now. Right? Yep. So, what do you want the average to be? Uh, 100. <laughs> 87. What is the minimal grade that you want to go to Riverland for this class? A B minus. A B minus? Okay, so he's going to be able to live with a B minus, so he needs to get an average of at least an 80%. So, if we want that to happen, we just take 95 plus 91 plus 85 plus x, we divide it by 4, and that needs to be equal to 80. Uh, can somebody take out their calculator? 95 plus 91 plus 85? 271. 271. <laughs> Multiply both sides by 4, and I get 320 is equal to 271 plus x. I subtract 271, and I get 
49. You have to get a 49% in order to get a B minus. So, I just want to be clear. Is calculus a challenging class? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. The fact that you have to get a 49% during the first, fourth quarter in order to get a B minus, that's a, it's not a whole lot to stress out about, is it? It's a oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, it is not. Not for calculus. Calculus is a year-long course that for Riverland goes into a semester course. So we will average all four quarters for your final grade. So if you're wondering how your grade would turn out, there's the mathematics. I could never get that on the <laughs> All right. So here you go. Um, we've got a great video for you here. Um, and with some Friday fun. Are you ready? Ready to try? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Oh, disgusting. Let's All right. Go. Ready? Give us a 30 second time. Here we go. So what's the deal here? You, there's a contest to stump, and how are you measuring who does the best stumping? And whoever stumps the most shoots wins an overnight stay, but it's not the only thing you can do. The measuring cups are down below, right? The measuring cups are down below. All right. So, and and if you if you win, you get to stay a show to a lawn. And what else do you have going on here? Well, it's great stumping point you're saying. You can come and spend the day listening to live music, eating international food, having wine tours and tastings, vineyard tours, seminars, arts and crafts. It's, it's a lot of fun, a whole day. Encapsulated him, <laughs> and then he gets up and he runs. It's like it's like dragging behind him. He goes after the next one. And he totally smacks the next one. And then he comes up to these like okay. And he goes and just quick, just like hop over the third one. His back leg like, catches and he falls. Like, he fell three times. He fell three times, and he had never fallen before. Uh -uh. No, and this that's actually uh, day one of practice for hurdlers. I tell them it's not if you fall, it's when you fall. It will happen at some point, and you have to decide: are you going to get back up and try it, or are you going to? Yeah, I can see you. That was funny. Where do you want us to be in the morning? Yeah, that was funny. Do you have your next assignment? So you got those first two, right? I thought you said hallway. I'm like, really? First two. That's it. Bench quiz or? Bench quiz.